चैप्टर सिक्सटी एट और बुक थ्री पार्ट थर्टी नाइन गुड बाय आई एम सो सॉरी आई कुड शो यू द टक पीपल मिस्टर वाइन अ बर्ड मे कसहारा लुक ट्रूली सॉरी शी एंड आई वर सिटिंग बाय द पॉन्ड लुकिंग एट इट्स थिक कैप ऑफ आइस इट वॉज ए बिग पॉन्ड विद थाउजेंड्स ऑफ लिटल कट्स ऑन इट्स सर्फेस फ्रॉम आइस स्केट ब्लेड्स मे कसहारा टेकन ऑफ फ्रॉम वर्क स्पेशली फॉर मी दिस मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग I had intended to visit her on Sunday, but a train accident had made me a day late. Me Kasahara had wrapped herself in a fur-lined coat. Her bright blue woolen hat bore a geometrical design in white yarn and was topped with a little pom-pom. She had knitted that hat herself, and she said she would make one just like it for me before next winter. Her cheeks were red, her eyes were bright and clear as the surrounding air, which made me very happy. She was only 17 after all the potential was there for almost limitless change The dog people all moved somewhere else after the pond froze over I'm sure you would have loved them Come back in the spring okay I'll introduce you I smiled I was wearing a duffel coat that was not quite warm enough with a scarf wrapped up to my cheeks and my hands thrust in my pockets A deep chill ran through the forest Hard snow coated the ground My sneakers were sliding all over the place. I should have bought some kind of non-slip boots for this trip. So you're going to stay here for a while longer? I asked. I think so. I might want to go back to school after enough time goes by, or I might not. I don't know. I might just get married. No, not really. She smiled with a white puff of breath. But anyhow, I'll stay for now. I need more time to think. about what i want to do where i want to go i want to take time and think about those things i nodded maybe that's what you really ought to do i said tell me mr winderbird did you think about those kinds of things when you were my age hmm maybe not i must have thought about them a little bit but i really don't remember thinking about things as seriously as you do I guess I just figured if I went on living in the usual way things would kind of work themselves out all right but they didn't did they unfortunately Mika Sahara looked me in the eye a calm expression on her face then she laid her gloved hands on her lap one atop the other So finally they wouldn't let Kumi go out of jail she asked She refused to be let out I said she figured she'd be mobbed better to stay in jail where she could have peace and quiet She's not even seeing me. She doesn't want to see anyone until everything is settled. When does the trial start? Sometime in the spring. Kumiko is pleading guilty. She's going to accept the verdict, whatever it is. It shouldn't be a long trial and there's a good possibility of a suspended sentence or at worst a light one. Mika Sahara picked up a stone at her feet and threw it toward the middle of the pond. It clattered across the ice to the other side. And you, Mr. Winder Bird, you'll stay home and wait for Kumiko again? I nodded. That's good. Or is it? I made my own big white cloud in the cold air. I don't know. I guess it's how we work things out. It could have been a whole lot worse, I told myself. Far off in the woods that surrounded the pond, a bird cried. I looked up and scanned the area, but there was nothing more to hear. Nothing to see. There was only the dry hollow sound of a woodpecker drilling a hole in a tree trunk. If Kumiko and I have a child, I'm thinking of naming it Korsika, I said. Said Mei Kasahara. As the two of us walked through the woods side by side, Mei Kasahara took off her right glove and put her hand in my pocket. This reminded me of Kumiko. She used to do the same thing when we walked together in the winter, so we could share a pocket on a cold day. I held Mei Kasahara's hand in my pocket. It was a small hand and warm as a sequestered soul. You know, Mr. Winderbird, everybody is going to think we're lovers. You may be right. So tell me, did you read all my letters? Your letters? I had no idea what she was talking about. Sorry, but I've never gotten a single letter from you. I got your address and phone number from your mother, which wasn't easy. I had to stress the truth quite a bit. Oh no, where'd they all go? I must have written you 500 letters. Mika Sahara looked up to the heavens. Later that afternoon, Mika Sahara saw me all the way to the station. 
We took a bus into town, ate pizza at a restaurant near the station, and waited for the little three-car diesel train that finally pulled in. Two or three people stood around the biggish wood stove that glowed red in the waiting room, but the two of us stayed out on the platform in the cold. A clear, hard-edged winter moon hung frozen in the sky. It was a young moon with a sharp curve like a Chinese sword. Beneath that moon, Mika Sahara stood on tiptoe and kissed me on the cheek. I could feel her cold, thin lips touch me where my mark had been. Goodbye, Mr. Wyndham Bird, she murmured. Thanks for coming all the way out here to see me. Hands thrust deep in my pockets, I looked into her eyes. I didn't know what to say. When the train came, she slipped her hat off, took one step back, and said to me, If anything ever happens to you, Mr. Wyndham Bird, just call out to me in a really loud voice, okay? To me and the talk people. Goodbye, me Kasahara, I said. The arc of the moon stayed over my head long after the train had left the station, appearing and disappearing each time the train rounded a curve. I kept my eyes on the moon, and whenever that was lost to sight, I watched the lights of the little towns as they went past the window. I thought of Mecca Sahara, with her blue wool hat alone on the bus, taking her back to her factory in the hills. Then I thought of the dark people, asleep in the grassy shadows somewhere. And finally, I thought of the world that I was heading back to. Goodbye, Mecca Sahara, I said. Goodbye, Mecca Sahara. May there always be something watching over you. I closed my eyes and tried to sleep. But it was not until much later that I was able to get any real sleep. In a place far away from anyone or anywhere, I drifted off for a moment. moment. And that was the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Thank you for listening. See you at another novel. <laughs> <laughs>